This is one of my favorite pieces of software, but to tell you the truth, I never bought it. A friend gave it to me after he downloaded it from a bulletin board. It's called the Berg Utilities, written by a man named Vernon Berg. And this is Vernon Berg over here. He's a programmer, but he gives his programs away. Vern, why do you do it? Well, I give my programs away because I don't need the money, but I like to share what I know with other people, and hopefully then they'll share what they have with me. Today, we take a look at shareware on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, featuring an online reference library, Wall Street reports, at-home shopping, airline reservations, games, and hundreds of other services. CompuServe, helping people get the most from computers. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chiffe, and this is Gary Kildall. Gary, as you can see from all these books here, there are literally thousands of programs you can get for nothing or for a very small contribution. This program here on the computer is called Piano Man by Neil Rubenking, a classic piece of shareware. It doesn't only play music, it's a full-blown music construction set. I can't think of another industry in which so many talented guys give away their products. You're a programmer. Explain this mentality. <laughs> well, Stuart, first of all, it's fun to program. It's really neat to take a concept and work from one line of code all the way to a full-fledged application. A second thing that's really important for the hobbyist and user group is that it's part of the social atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It's like ham radio operators that give away circuit diagrams, they'll mm -hmm. send messages across country for free. It's the same idea. A third thing that's important is it takes a big investment to market and sell, support, uh, you know, get a product in the market, you're not even sure you're going to be successful. Yeah. They can't argue with a free program. <laughs> the worst part about that kind of thing is you also, you can't do the thing you like best, and that's program. <laughs> right. Today we're going to take a look at some of the best examples of shareware, both for the IBM PC and the Macintosh, and we'll meet the man who helped create the concept, Jim Button. We're going to start by paying a visit to a large company whose word processor of choice is not Word or WordStar or WordPerfect, but a piece of shareware called PCWrite. At SRI International in Menlo Park, California, the Life Sciences Department collects a lot of data from laboratory tests on potentially toxic substances. The department also produces a lot of paper output in the form of proposals, reports, and test results. And the word processor that many researchers use is a shareware program called PCWrite. We have a lot of people uh, who their background is in biology. Very few of them have ever laid uh, hands on a computer terminal or a PC until very recently. And uh, it's, I have to do somewhat of a selling job to convince them, yes, computers can make your life happy and healthy. And so uh, what I like about PCWrite is it's something that given just a very, very brief introduction, a person can begin to, to work on it. PC Write is well known for its 45 different help screens and its very rapid search and replace operations. The program has the same kinds of features found on most word processors, like block editing, embedded printer commands, and single key commands. But PC Write also offers some uncommon features. And the advantage of PC Write is that it pretty much works in straight ASCII mode. Uh, it doesn't, you don't need a lot of crazy control characters the way some of these other files do. So it's fully compatible to move between, say, the output from a database manager, uh, a file off of the mainframe, a, a segment of text off of our NBI word process, processing system. And these can all be pulled together uh, into a single report. Of course, the biggest difference between PC Write shareware and the big name programs is the price. You can't spend more than $89 for a fully registered copy, and most users get their first copy for free. Joining us in the studio now, the man they sometimes call the father of shareware, Jim Button, CEO of Buttonware. And next to Jim is Russell DiMaria, author of the book Public Domain Software. Gary? Jim, what's the background behind shareware? Where'd it come from? 
Shareware sure, started really in 1982, and I think Andrew Flugelman probably was first with the idea uh, out of San Francisco, and he uh, produced a product called uh, PC Talk. Mm -hmm. It was the first shareware product on the market. Now, uh, is there money that changes hands when you are uh, involved in distributing software to, sh to shareware? Um, shareware is a distribution method and is primarily a way of distributing uh, full, f uh, full function demo disks. Um, users are invited to share the full function disks with all of their friends and to use them in the comforts of their home. Money changes hands when the user decides that he really likes the program, wants to put it into productive use, and develop a relationship with the author, which would include technical support, printed manual, and things like that. And what are the typical prices for a uh, package? Prices, shareware prices go all the way from uh, 15 to $20 up to, there's one product on the market that's $100. Mm -hmm. What's that? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Russell, what's the difference between shareware and freeware? Your, your book is about public domain software, which I take it is slightly different. Well, not really. Uh, the book is about public domain and shareware, and, and the primarily we're about shareware. Uh, freeware, shareware, it's not really a difference. They're just different words. Um, as Jim says, it's a marketing principle and uh, the good products um, that you can use and get cheaply uh, by comparison with the commercial stuff and then you can uh, also get things you couldn't get in the commercial market, wonderful utilities, uh, mm -hmm. very excellent products. Okay, Jim, one of the most successful shareware products is of course yours, PC File, mm -hmm. uh, and you've got a new version of PC File now, I understand. Could, yes. could you show us what's new and different and better about it? Okay, well, we're just announcing PC File. Uh, the announcement letters are going out I guess it's called today PC and File tomorrow. Plus, huh? PC File Plus mm -hmm. version 2. The new version uh, carries on with what version 1 had. The main new feature is the uh, graphics capability. Now, in this version, you can uh, graph the data from your database. That only makes sense in a database uh, where you can summarize the data because databases have a lot of data. So the graphics version of PC File Plus will summarize the data in the database. Mm -hmm. I've set up a uh, smart key or a macro key to go through this particular database and pull out uh, sales records for every February uh, for the last five years and summarize some sales figures. Uh, the dollars are made up, but they're uh, close to being mm -hmm. uh, buttonware sales revenues <laughs> for the past five years. So if we'll go ahead and start the program, and uh, um, ideally the, uh, the user, of course, would be answering questions here. Uh, they're very easy type questions to answer, not of the nature of how to draw the graph, but of the nature of how to summarize the mm -hmm. data. Uh, and so after answering those questions, the program produces, in this case, a horizontal bar chart. Um, of the February figures. As a user now, I can do uh, some interesting things with this. I may decide that I would rather see a vertical bar chart, mm -hmm. and so I can change the graph instantly, or a pie chart for those sales figures. And I can also uh, do things like draw a line showing the average sales, or I could do a regression analysis and show the line that best fits the points mm -hmm. uh, across the figures. But it's basically an easy to use uh, graphics extension to the program. And, and what suggested price do you have on PC File Plus? PC File Plus is $69.95. Okay, could I ask you to get out of PC File Plus so we can get Russell who wants to show us a couple things. And while you're doing that, Russell, let me ask you, you have a couple of favorite uh, shareware programs you're going to show us. What are they? Well, I'm going to show you a few of, of the many that I like. and. Um, I'm uh, going to show you HDIR, which is a colorful directory program, and PROCOM, which is a very mm -hmm. fine telecommunications package, and let me get in okay. here. Okay, you load up a minute, Jim, let me ask you. I heard something kind of new here as you guys were talking at the beginning about shareware, not as just sort of generosity, but you called it a marketing principle or concept. Uh, is that an important element that it's really, because Gary was talking about that at the beginning of the program, it's a way to really get software out there? Yes, it's, a, it's really a marketing concept more than anything else. To say that something is shareware says nothing about the quality of the program or what the program does. It simply talks about how, we dis how the program is distributed. Mm -hmm. So it's a marketing concept or a distribution method. Mm -hmm. Okay, Russell, you've got uh, your stuff up. What is that? What we've got here is Auto Menu, which is one of the most successful shareware products. And it's a front-end menu program really useful for uh, hard disk management. And uh, 
this is what you get when you get shareware. This, this menu is already built in. You can modify it and change it or start from scratch with a new one. I've added one called Computer Chronicles Submenu number 8. If I press number 8, I go automatically to that menu. Um, on this menu, I have several options already set up. I thought I'd show you the HDIR first. And I've set it up with a script to show that I can add any parameters on the fly. I've decided to sort this by two columns. And uh, mm -hmm. there we go. You'll notice HDIR does everything in color. That means that I have uh, uh, light blue for exec files, uh, white for doc files, green for com files. Mm -hmm. Very quickly identify what's there. I can also sort them by different methods. And I can hit the keys a couple times. You see there's a summary of how much data is stored in that subdirectory. And then I go back to the menu. This is all done very mm -hmm. quickly. Show us Procom. Procom. That's been one of the most successful shareware programs. Very successful uh, product. And um, I can't show you the whole product in the time we have, but I can show you something. And this is the uh, this is a summary of the commands here. This is basically a Russell uh, communications program. Communications program and communications is important in shareware because much of the distribution is done through bulletin boards and other mm -hmm. okay. telecommunications means. Dialing directory here, I have a few things in it already. And uh, for instance, if I hit the number two here and then I press return, I will automatically dial our bulletin board in Hawaii. Uh, I can exit that since we're not going to dial it now. And I was going to show you some protocols. If I'm going to download online, uh, I may use different protocols to download. And the protocols affect how the tra transmission mm -hmm. is made, how fast it is, and other things. And here's a set of uh, protocols that are available in Procom. And there's a mm -hmm. subject in our book that goes into great detail about what these protocols are all about. It's a lot to explain. Alt-X takes me out, and mm -hmm. I go back to the menu. I can go back to the main menu like this and back to the DOS mm -hmm. level anytime I want. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, Russell, uh, how, do, how does the quality control, you brought that up uh, a little earlier, uh, how does the customer uh, ensure that he's getting a good product? He assures it by using it before he pays for it. Mm -hmm. That's the wonderful thing oh, about shareware. Okay. Okay. He actually has it in his hands, and he sees if it's fit for his purpose, mm -hmm. and if it isn't, he doesn't have to use it and doesn't have to pay for it. G Jim, is there much abuse of shareware because of the way it works? I don't know how you'd define abuse. We give permission for people to use it and try it out for as long as they feel necessary in order to evaluate it. I don't think there's a lot of abuse. Uh, the good programs get paid for. Jim Russell, thank you very much. In just a minute, we'll take a look at some shareware for the Macintosh. First of all, we're going to visit the world's largest shareware distributor, PC Sig, in Sunnyvale, California. If you've ever bought shareware, chances are fairly good that you got it from here. This is PC SIG, the world's largest shareware distributor with a library of over 25,000 programs and sales of some 1,000 discs each day. Well, shareware is the alternative to the high price commercial spread. The shareware programs that are now available are equal, if not better, than a lot of the commercial programs on the market and hundreds of dollars less when it comes to registration. PC SIG is the conduit between shareware authors and users handling the marketing and advertising for the authors and guaranteeing quality for the customers. When we get a program in here that's submitted, uh, it goes through our librarian, he looks it over. If it meets what we consider to be good shareware standards, uh, he then sends it out to an independent reviewer. Then it's reviewed again before it's placed in the catalog. Everything sold here is also supported by full-time staffers. Technical support. PC SIG's success has allowed it to branch out into some new areas. It now publishes a bi-monthly magazine. You can buy all 25,000 programs at once on this CD-ROM disc. And you can buy some of the titles now in retail stores. And the company has also branched out into the business of selling hard-to-find videos. In other words, shareware has been very good to PC SIG. It's come a long way from the founder's garage to a company now making several million dollars a year. In Sunnyvale, California, for the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods. Joining us in the studio now is Rains Cohen, sysop of the BMUG Bulletin Board, and next to Rains is Stephen Howard, also with BMUG, and Gary BMUG stands for Berkeley Mac Users Group. Okay. <laughs> Rains, there's, I'm a little confused. Uh, we, we see uh, shareware prices ranging, say, $10 to $100 for, uh, it seems to be uh, the price of a lot of commercial software is in there. Is it a profit-making thing, or is it a free software? 
Uh, for mm -hmm. some authors, it is a profit-making thing. For notably, say, Scott Watson of FreeSoft or uh, Don Brown of CE Software. However, they've often gotten a start in the freeware or shareware business and gone on to commercial distribution beyond that once mm -hmm. they've gotten their name recognition. Okay, well tell us a little bit about BMUG. What do you do you there? Well, we started as a UC Berkeley student group, University of California at Berkeley, and we now are about 6,000 members around the world just exchanging information. We maintain a software library as one of our functions, is publishing a newsletter and running a bulletin board system. In, in terms of Gary's question, how do you as a users group see shareware? I mean, what's the point? Yeah. Well, the main point is that for the user, it represents a way to try before you buy. It's a way to avoid having to pick your way through ads and find out what's real and put up with the vaporware and other... And how about from the author's research. point of view? The author's point of view, it's a way of uh, distributing software without having hardly any costs. Uh, lots of people will give it away for you, online services, user groups, and commercial places, and get the word out and around. So no marketing costs. Okay, you've got some of your favorite BMUG shareware pieces here. Show us what you've got, Rams. Sure. Uh, the first one is Artisto. It's a desk accessory, Artisto Plus, rather, by Megamot. Megamot. Um, let's you see. It. Go ahead. Uh, Artisto. Artisto. Okay, never did that before. Okay, Artisto lets you take any Mac Paint style picture, such as one we've got here, and take out a piece of it. Like I'll take this person's face right here, copy it out, and then incorporate that in into whatever program you're working in. Here I'm working in Mac Write. It's working on a letter, and I'll just paste it right in. And that's fairly useful, incorporating mm -hmm. graphics at any point. And this is a this is basically a free program then. It's shareware. Sure. So yeah. just to get an idea, what <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 it's. It's a five or ten dollar donation okay, requested. Sure. Okay. okay, what else do you have on there from BMUG? Let's see, another popular program. And would Artisto, for example, be available on your bulletin board? Yes, in a bulletin board and in our software library. Okay. Another popular BMUG program is Stuff It. It's a program that compresses and decompresses files, and such as we've got one right here that I'll extract. And uh, it's a. What's the file you're working on? Is that is a graphic it's game? It's a, a graphic image, the mm -hmm. one that we just looked mm -hmm. at. It's had it compressed here. This is used quite a lot by users of commercial on and public domain online services, uh, both f because the files are smaller as, mm -hmm. as for d transmission, it's less expensive to transmit. Okay, so you're waiting for it to do its better. It's you know? working as we speak, and it just uncompressed that picture that we just saw. It, it saved 29% in that case. would have been 35K normally. could have cost you a bit to download. Yeah, Stephen, this you have an interesting policy on pricing this thing, don't you? You were explaining before. Well, BMUG disks are distributed at the cost it takes for us to duplicate them. We have no claims on the software on them. Those are, in according to shareware ideal, owned by the authors. So we distribute them at the lowest cost we can, and that ends up being about $3 for a disk full. But what about, I, you were telling us about the decompression and the compression software, about how depending on what you're going to do oh. with it, you have a different price. Yeah, Stuff It in particular, uh, Ray Lau, who wrote the program, has a very nice scheme. If you're just using it to decompress files that you're getting from some online service or elsewhere, it's free, and you, there is no donation requested. If you're using it to archive files, to upload, then he requests $18. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what about the world of HyperCard? What has that done to shareware? Well, HyperCard's had an incredible effect on the, just the development of public domain and shareware software because it makes it so much easier for anybody to express an idea in the form of a program. And so here's a sampling of what uh, some people all around the world have developed. It just takes so much less time that it makes it that much easier. Okay, so what are we saying here now? This is uh, a card these, for each uh, one of the Yeah, this uh, is uh, a, a, a BMUG stack catalog by mm -hmm. Scott Cronick, okay. one of our members, that simply shows one card from each of the stacks in our library. That's and a lot of stacks. Mm. Oh, got over 25 megabytes mm. of stacks. Mm. Okay. What's the relationship between shareware and the usual commercial software that you'd buy off the shelf in a retailer? Are these in competition in a sense, and what do the commercial software houses think about the shareware idea? Yeah. Well, um, 
as Rains mentioned, many commercial software houses started as a shareware author with a product uh, which met with some success and advanced into more products and more distribution uh, and become truly commercial products. Other shareware items remain in shareware, particularly the smaller and, particu and very useful products that you know, people just don't want to go and, and look for to buy. They'd like it to be available faster uh, through many means of distribution on disks from bulletin board systems everywhere. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, also earlier that you have another new distribution medium, also, right? <laughs> right. There's, there's a lot of shareware. And uh, because of the bulk and because of the variety, BMUG is going to be releasing a PD-ROM, which is a compact <laughs> disk uh -huh. with uh, hundreds of megabytes of shareware on it, uh, plus some other good stuff, um, so that people can have all of it there initially. Do you tend to have shareware authors kind of following up on your point, Stephen, kind of migrate uh, to become commercial authors and then actually selling their program to a software house? Well, it's in the Mac world so far, it's been rather that the individual author becomes a company unto himself. Um, not many have stayed as professional shareware distributors. Uh, we've seen that in the PC world, but that hasn't happened so much in the Mac world. And how about the role, again, of the users group? I mean, earlier in the show, we saw th uh, people like Buttonware, which is just a, a business selling software on a shareware basis. Uh, do you guys see yourself as being in a business uh, primarily or being a users group who's sort of simply doing nice things for people who are interested in what you're doing? Well, we are an educational nonprofit organization, and we're in, sort of in the business of giving away information. And uh, so we, we do that just by getting the software out there and helping people learn about it and get the most out of it. And did you guys write software yourself, by the way? I've done some work in Hypercard and otherwise, and looking to distribute it as shareware. What's, what's, what's the future of shareware? Is that, is that going to continue to be a, a healthy alternative means of distributing software? I think so, so long as it's very expensive to place ads in magazines and actually start a company and go through distributors, it'll provide a channel for people, the small guy, to get started. And so what's the best way for somebody to get access to the shareware? Or through uh, the user groups, they contact you? Yeah, contact us or any user group. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, lo the local user group is the best one. Yeah. Rain, Stephen, thank you very much. That's our look at Shareware. We hope to see you here again next week on the Computer Chronicles. Access file this week. IBM has finally taken the wraps off a new version of PC DOS called DOS 4.0, which is supposed to be easier to use. It also provides support for expanded memory and larger files. It's available immediately in 3.5 or 5 and a quarter inch disk sizes. The new DOS 4.0 carries a one time license charge of $150. Not to be outdone, Peter Norton Computing Incorporated of Santa Monica, California has introduced PC DOS 4.0 versions of its own. Both packages allow allow users to take advantage of the enhanced DOS 4.0 and MS-DOS 4.0 operating system unveiled by IBM and Microsoft. Trouble in Suffolk County, New York, four high-tech firms are filing suit challenging the constitutionality of a law regulating the use of video display terminals. New York Telephone Company is threatening to close its directory assistance office and move its employees elsewhere. Other companies are considering following suit. The new law requires employers with more than 20 VDTs to make special provisions for employees working with them. Companies are worried about the compliance cost and complain that the law is anti-business. Time now for this week's software review. Here's Paul Schindler. Can you tell what comes next? I couldn't, and the people who wrote the Mentor software package say only one person in ten can solve it. Give up? Six comes next. Look again. This is the numbers one through five merged with their mirror image. Well, when they say Mentor uses unusual techniques to test your intelligence, they aren't kidding. This program includes more than 50 tests and exercises. Let's look at some of them. After eliciting your name and date of birth, the program offers three main sections. It'll draw your biorhythm chart, or you can use it to test your IQ, if you're an adult who is a native speaker of English. The program will test your memory, your reaction time, and your coordination, as well as your ability to perceive time. The intelligence test offers some unusual questions, which I certainly found challenging. In some sense, this is the ultimate yuppie software for those who can't find out enough about themselves. You might like it even if you aren't a yuppie. By the way, it comes with what it describes as the smallest manual in the world. Mentor is $50 from Heuristic Research of Midland, Texas for the Computer Chronicles. I'm Paul Schindler. 
The three-year-old court fight between the two giants in the law database business are settling a much-publicized copyright suit. Me Data Central Incorporated has agreed to pay licensing fees to West Publishing Company. The first shipments of Apple Computer's long-awaited Apple Fax modem have gone out. The $699 modem is compatible with Group 3 facsimile machines and must be used with another conventional modem to actually access telephone lines. It has a pass-through button on its front to allow use of the conventional modem without interference from the Apple Fax modem. A worldwide shortage of memory chips is keeping workers at seven semiconductor plants owned by Japan's Hitachi home for the summer. The Hitachi workers have agreed to skip their week-long summer vacations that they usually take in mid-August. Two other chip makers, Fujitsu and Mitsubishi Electric, are negotiating with unions for similar cancellations of summer holidays. The chip shortage is expected to last until next spring. Lotus 123 beat out 10 other spreadsheets to win Software's Digest highest overall evaluation for the fifth consecutive year in a row. The June spreadsheet ratings report gave 123 a four star rating. 123 received a rating of excellent in the categories of ease of learning, ease of use and error handling, and a rating of good in performance and versatility. Texas Instruments may have outdone itself this time. The firm will begin marketing the first miniature PC designed for children under eight. Computer Fun is priced at only $90. It comes with a voice recognition system, which is limited to two words, yes and no. And it comes with a number of built-in ROM-based software packages based on typical preschool activities. But if kids get bored with these, they can always switch into the playing mode to keep them entertained. That's it for this week's Random Access. I'm Cynthia Steele. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, featuring an online reference library, Wall Street reports, at-home shopping, airline reservations, games, and hundreds of other services. CompuServe, helping people get the most from computers. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. For a transcript of this week's Computer Chronicles, send $3 to PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. Please indicate program date.